In this video, I'm going to show you how to use different methods to subset your data. We're going to use modifiers to state a commands. And the three that we're most concerned with in this video is the if modifier, the in modifier, and the by or by sort prefix commands, each one of which allows us to slice our data set into smaller pieces or subsamples to analyze very particular pieces of a data set. To understand how this works, we need to understand the different kind of operators in Stata. And I've taken a screen capture out of the Stata manual that I'm going to bring up here. And we can discuss some of these differences. There's three different kinds of operators in Stata. There are arithmetic operators. And you would use those when you're creating new variables, for example. Maybe you want to create a new variable which is equal to variable 1 plus variable 2 or variable 1 squared. You would go to those arithmetic operators to figure out how to produce those kinds of variables. There's also a set of operators that are logical operators. That allows us to do test different kinds of conditions and the conditions are and, or, and not. For example, we could test a variable or list out the, ca list out the cases of a particular variable that are missing or are not missing. We could subset our data by looking at men who are married, that is men equals one and married and uh, marital equals one. So logical operators allow us to test conditions and might be useful in subsetting data. And finally we have relational operators which allow us to test for equalities, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and so forth. Note that in Stata one method for negation or the not is an exclamation mark, that, an exclamation point. That's usually what I end up using. And so if we want to test for something not equal to something else, you do exclamation point equals. Of course, if you prefer the tilde, tilde equals works as well. Now, one area of confusion for people is when do I use one equal sign versus two equal signs? It's pretty easy to keep this straight. Anytime you're creating a variable to equal another variable, you're creating a new measurement, you use a single equal signs. That's, is, that's when uh, in Stata we were creating an expression. On the other hand, anytime you're checking for an equality of some type, some type of relational operator, and you, the relational operator is equal to, is var1 equal to var2, you use two equal signs, equal, equal. Let's go back to Stata. And now I'm going to show you that I've created a little program in my Stata editor. I'm going to come over here and I've already opened the editor and I've read a file in. There's some new information in this file that you may not have seen before. Most programming languages allow you to insert comments into your program that allow you to keep track of all the decisions that you've made and again helps provide a very nice audit trail if you ever need to come back to your program and determine what you did and why you did it. There are many ways of commenting in Stata. I've elected one method here. Anything, any text or any numbers that appear between a slash asterisk and an asterisk slash is disregarded or ignored by Stata when we execute our program. So you can see at the top I have a couple of lines there and it says if at the end of a command means the command is to use only the data specified, if is allowed with most Stata commands, and it's colored green, this is a comment in Stata and Stata will ignore it. It's purely there for me and for my documentation. Also, as a matter of convention, when I'm using a text editor, how do I know if I mean if in a literal sense or if in a Stata sense? I delimit it with two dashes. I wrap two dashes around any of my Stata commands when I'm working in a text file so I know it refers to the command. So let's go ahead and look at the first command in this file. It's summarize educ if year equals equals 2012. So here in this, in this first block, we're looking at different ways of using an if statement to subset the data. We know that the general social survey data go from 1972 to 2012, but what if I wanted to only analyze a particular year, in this case 2012? I check for an equality if year equals 2012, but remember I need two equal signs, and I should get summary statistics on that variable number of years of education simply for that year. I'll show you one other trick here. I'm going to click on this on 
the five in this line five and it highlights the whole line. I could copy and paste that into the command window. Perfectly acceptable way of executing the command. But if I click on this button over here, which executes the do file, but because I have highlighted part of it, it will only execute the part that's highlighted. So we're going to just get the one command and we're going to look at all these examples one at a time. There's my results in the results window. We can see in, 19, in 2012 there were uh, 1,972 observations with non-missing data. The average was about 13.5 years of education with a standard deviation of about 3.1 years. And the minimum value was zero years of education and the maximum was 20. What if I wanted to do this for one race or the other? Well, let's look at the next command. Here I've taken in my if statement. I'm using an, a logical connector to only select cases where year equals 2012 and race equals 1. The and sign puts them together with the logical connector and. Race equals 1 is for white respondents. Race equals 2 is for black respondents. And executing that, you can see my sample size decreases a, a bit because I've excluded the black and other respondents. And we can see that the education level, inc the average education increases slightly and the standard deviation decreases slightly while the range is still the same. The race variable measures white, black, and other. And the other category can be not very useful to us because it includes Hispanic and Asian and kind of a mix of everybody left over. So what if I wanted to look at average education for all the white and black respondents and exclude the other category? Well, now I can use an OR connector. So first of all, I'm going to subset my data using the IF statement to year equals 2012. And, and then I'm going to use an AND connector. So year has to be 2012. AND I want all respondents where race equals 1 or race equals 2. That vertical bar between the two race um, relational operators is an OR connector. Stata works in, with parentheses uh, establishing an order of precedent. If what's in that parentheses is true, a respondent is either white or black, then that part of that parentheses is equal to 1. Then Stata moves over and says if year is equal to 2012, that evaluates to 1. As long as both of those conditions are true or equal to 1, we'll get those respondents in 2012 who are white or black. There's my results. You can see my sample size increases to account for going from just the white respondents to now the white and the black respondents. My average years of education is almost identical. It's a, it's a tenth of a year off, and the standard deviation is virtually identical. There's another way of doing this. That way worked, but I also, because I know the data pretty well, I can limit my data using the if statement to year 2012 and race less than three, that is white or black which are coded 1 and 2. I should get the identical answer when I run this, and I do. Now I'm going to go ahead and rerun this problem again, simply for year 2012. And then I'm going to show you one more use of the if statement down here using a function in the if statement. So there's a function called missing. And the argument that that missing function takes is a list of variables. If I want to negate that, I use exclamation point missing. So what this statement tells me is, let's get summary statistics for the variable years of education if year equals 2012 and cases are not missing on race, age, or sex. And there we go. Let's move on and look at the in modifier. I tend not to use the in modifier too much, but it's available to you and you might have uh, use for it. First of all, instead of using if, we use in, and in this case I'm just going to list out cases. I'm going to list the variable age in 10. Well the in 10 says list a range of values and the range of values is a single value 10. So here's the age of case number 10 in the cumulative GSS data set, somebody who's 30 years old. I can also list this as a range of values. List age in 1 slash 10. So that's 1 through cases 1 through 10 inclusive. 
23, 70, 48, and so forth. I can move this range around. So here I'm listing cases 10 through 20. And I can make use of an F or L part of this um, modifier. For example, I can list age in 57,040 slash L, which tells data, go to the case 5,740, start there, and list all the cases to the end of the data set, which you can see in the results window. Or I can use the F part of this modifier, which means start at the first case, and in this case, go through 10. And list out those 10 ages. And then finally, the last thing I can do is I can use a negative number for a range. And what this tells data is go to 10 cases from the end of the data set. Go to the last case in the data set, subtract 10, and then I'm using the L part of the modifier, and this will list out the last 10 cases of the data set. You can use this with other Stata commands. I'm just using it with list here as an example. But you could certainly, if you knew the, your data set well, you could use this for summarize or regress regression or any of your other state of commands. Finally, what if you want to process data by different groups? So we have a variable, for example, sex, which is men and women, or race, which is white, black, and other. And what if we wanted separate summary statistics for each of those groups? We do that with either the by or by sort prefix command. Prefix commands You'll know you have a prefix command if you see a colon, and it comes before the actual command. The difference between by sort or by and by sort is not very much. Both commands require that the data set be sorted by the variable that shows up in that by statement. With using by, you have to explicitly state sort if your data is not already sorted in that order. So, for example, that first command I have by sex. Notice I have, as part of my prefix command, an option, which is sort. And then I'm going to ask Stata to produce a summary set of statistics for education for 1972 for men and for women. I'll move this window out of the way a little bit. And there's our results. 803 men, 805 women. Average years of education, about 11.5 for men, 11.1 for women. Very little difference in, in the years of education in 1972. I can accomplish the same outcome by using the by sort command, which automatically sorts your data set. Why would we use by instead of by sort? Or why wouldn't we just use by sort all the time? With large data sets, sorting can be a little slow. If your data set are in the sort order required for your analysis, you can simply use by without the sort option. I have yet to find myself in that situation, so for me, I always use by sort. But keep in mind, if you're looking for efficiencies and you're dealing with large data sets, you could sort the data set once and then use by for any number of analyses. So here we can accomplish the exact same outcome with by sort, and in fact, we get the exact same numbers. I'm going to do this by race for two different years, by sort race. So now I have three groups of race, white, black, and other. So I should get three sets of summary statistics. And we're going to look at average um, and standard deviations for years of education in 1972. We can see here average for white is 11.6, for black respondents is 9.7, and for other respondents is 11.5. So there's only four other respondents. This would be a very bad estimate. But we have them anyways. I would choose to discard them for my analysis. And let's repeat this for 2012 data and see if things have changed. So we see that education has increased to 13.7 years for white respondents, 13.2 years for black respondents, and approximately 12.8 years for the other respondents. Now we have 196 other respondents reflects the change in the demographic structure and the diversity of the United States, and that we see a closing of the gap in number of years of education for black and for white. Well, there you go. There's your introduction to if, in, and by. 
which are three different ways of subsetting or working with smaller groups, subsamples of your data set. As usual, if you have any questions or issues, shoot me an email or give me a call and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thank you.